So the church gives us two readings today, one from the Hebrew Scriptures and one from the New Testament, which leaves us a choice. Do we talk about this passage from the book of Tobit, about Tobit losing his eyesight because a bunch of birds defecate in his eyes overnight? Or do we talk about Jesus' encounter with some Herodians and Pharisees? I'm going to go with Jesus and the Herodians and Pharisees and lead the bird poop for another day. So in this story from Mark, we get one of the more famous lines in scripture that you hear quoted in many places, that repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. And we find that phrase lifted out sometimes out of its context uh, and used as a, a sort of general statement about the separation of church and state. We sometimes hear it as though Jesus is anticipating modern separation of church and state by 1800 years, and I don't really think that's what's going on. And in fact, I think if we hear it in its first century Jewish colonial context, when uh, the Jewish people are part of a wider and sometimes oppressive Roman Empire, uh, we hear a little bit more about what Jesus is up to. And I think that helps us to think a little bit more about what we as Catholics, what we as disciples can be up to in the public square today. So. The, the passage from Mark starts off, some Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus to ensnare him in his speech. Well, that was the tell right away. Uh, Herodians and Pharisees working together, that's not the usual. Uh, so we need to think a little bit about who these people are. So the Herodians are a little more obvious. You can hear the name of King Herod in there, and the uh, uh, not just the king himself, um, but all of the political establishment, all of the Jewish political establishment working with him and effectively working with him on behalf of the Romans to keep control of the region. Um, so uh, they uh, make sure that they keep the peace, they make sure they collect taxes and keep that money going back to, to Rome. So when you hear about tax collectors, they might be working with the Herodians. Uh, but the Pharisees are a whole different ballgame. Um, the Pharisees get a pretty bad rap in the Hebrew Christian scriptures as though they're, the, they're usually the bad guys who Jesus is arguing with. And yet at the same time, they probably share a lot with Jesus. So the Pharisees think that the, the current state of affairs in first century Palestine and Judea uh, is not the way God wants it to be, and that God is working or will be working to fix the world sometime soon uh, to restore the Jewish nation to its prior glory, to bring them back from exile for real this time, even though they're physically there, there was a need for more echoes of John the Baptist here as well. And the way that the Pharisees think this will come about is if the Jewish people live lives of holiness by holding up their end of the covenant made with God, then God will respond in kind and fulfill his part of the covenant again. And so they're a pretty radical movement. Um, they don't really associate as much with the temple and its priesthood. Instead, they have their own institutions called synagogues, where you learn from teachers or rabbis how to better observe Torah. And so here you have an example of the kind of person that Jesus might have been perceived as, as a rabbi teaching how to follow Torah properly. Um, so if Pharisees and Herodians are working together, that's weird. That's like uh, Democrats and Republicans working together. Or, or more, it's like uh, far left-wing socialist Democrats and Tea Party Republicans coming up to you with a question. So Jesus knows something is up and knows that they're trying to, to get him in some of a catch-22. And here's the catch-22. They ask him, should we pay taxes or not? And if he says, nope, don't pay your taxes, uh, then he is committing, a, if not a crime, at least telling people to commit a crime by not paying uh, their taxes not being good citizens. But if he says, uh, 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 yeah, you should pay your taxes, then the Pharisees and perhaps the more um, radical, violent revolutionaries, the Zealots, are going to be mad at him for seeming to be a supporter of the Roman authorities, the Jewish political establishment, all the people that seem to be oppressing them. So they're not really asking him a real question. They're not really looking for a dialogue. They're looking to trip him up. And uh, we can hear that today as Catholics living in the public world, perhaps. What are the questions that are asked of us sometimes politically that are not really open to our dialogue, but instead are an attempt to, to figure out what side we're on or trip us up? Um, the, the fact that we have these readings on the Feast of St. Justin the Martyr shows that the Christian political relationship to the political world has always been one of a bit of distance and unhappiness. So when someone asks, well, which side are you on? 
on any number of questions without any room for nuance, without any room for context, without any room for explanation, we should be have our guard up a little bit. I know I'm not as fast on my feet as Jesus seems to be in this text, um, but the lesson that he gives us of saying, repay to God what belongs to God, that might be a touchstone for us as we're thinking about how we live in our public lives. Um, repay to God what belongs to God. Well, what doesn't belong to God? Everything belongs to God. Our own selves, our own bodies belong to God. So if we're looking to figure out whether in a sincere dialogue with Catholics, with others who disagree with us about any of the, the major important issues in our time, or if we're looking to um, find a way out of a question that's not really a question for dialogue, but instead a question to try to put us in a box, starting with that, we pay to God what belongs to God. Our lives, our being, our hopes, our dreams, we belong to God. That's who we become in our baptism. That's who we became in our creation. And so if we hold that center, how do we figure out how to um, pay our debts to God, do our best for God, um, love God and love our neighbor, this primary commandment that Jesus gives us elsewhere? That's the way that needs to be our touchstone uh, in a world where politics are much more like people coming up and asking a trick question rather than asking a real question. So I hope we can pray today to recognize what is of God, recognize that we are loved and, uh, and belong to God, and figure out how to live that out more sincerely, more authentically in our daily lives.